Hi everyone, this is Yelena from Amazonia PPC and today in today's episode I have a very special guest with me, uh, Mac Schlesinger from Bestsellers Listers. Um, Mac is here to talk to us about product listing optimization and um, some of the tips and techniques that they have that are best practices when you want to get ranked on Amazon. So Mac, welcome and thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Zuna. Thanks, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure being here, sharing some value for you, for your audience. It's great. Of course. Um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, how you started, and about the company, and what do you do? So about my ESL, my company, it's, it's, a, it's a long journey. Basically, everything went like, you know, step by step, which happened. Uh, so basically, how it started. Let's see. Uh, I think I started the whole journey like uh, ten, nine, ten years ago. Mm-hmm. When was like the starting the whole uh, well, so basically me personally i i always i, I was always like a uh, person that likes to be online like i think i i worked on all the marketplaces like when i was a kid like uh, i had my phone and um i was always busy like finding stuff online buying stuff selling stuff like i had all, all the junk from my house i like i always like to sell it online Mm -hmm. So let's say, for example, people in school, in my school, they, when, when they wanted something or they wanted to sell something, they always came to me like, uh, can, you, can you list it for me? Can you sell it for me? I mean, was the business just uh, like a hobby? Mm -hmm. So, you know, as I grew up, I um, started to get into business. You know, I had some jobs. I worked in uh, B&H Photo in uh, New York City, whatever, a few companies. And after a while, you know, I started feeling like the, the edge, like the, the hunger of getting out of myself and start doing something and start building something for myself. So, um, but I didn't know how to start. I mean, I, I don't have any business degree or something to know where to start and where to go. Right. So until one day I decided, um, actually, I have a good friend of mine. He told me, listen, you have a lot of talent, you have a lot of um, knowledge. You, you just have to, have, to, have to start using it. So one thing that, that I did, that I remember, that opened a lot of doors, which is I basically went out of my comfort zone one day. I decided I'm, I'm going to get up early morning, like 5 or 6 o'clock. And I went to a local like a uh, shopping mall. They had like all the big names, um, stores, like brand names. Mm -hmm. So I went there. And from when they opened, when they opened the doors, I went like a full day. I went from store to store and with a big shopping uh, cart, and I filled up everything with all the stuff that they have. Like, they usually have by the clearance section, you know, like well, everything on sale, like brand new products for half the price or more. So I, saw, I, I had no idea what I'm gonna do with it, why I'm doing it, I just knew I have to do something to get out. So I did it, and after the day I went home, and you know, usually when you start doing something, all the doors started opening. So then was like 10 years ago, it was the first time I started to find out about, um, how does it call like um, uh, thrift shops, you know, they, they sell all this used stuff. So I, um, I found out about that. I did some research and I found some local ones. So I went over and I did the same thing. You know, I found some good stuff, brand name stuff. And I brought it home and I filled up my whole dining room. Everything was full of boxes and bags and papers and stuff. And I started listing them, you know, on Amazon, um, not Amazon, um, eBay, and there's other few sites like local Craigslist stuff. And I started getting the feel like for e-commerce, like for uh, how to sell, how to list, how to product, uh, like for more uh, professionally just, than just the hobby. You know, as time went on, I did that for a while. Then I, uh, there was a lot of stuff that I couldn't sell, obviously. So I had to either sell it for cost price. So, I, I mean, I lost some money, but it was, it was a good experience. So as time went on, I started to get, get full, full um, uh, more hunger of, you know, getting something more, something bigger. So I, then I, I mean, let's make a long story short. I went, I tried everything that is re related to e-commerce. Like say I did um, retail arbitrage, I did um, drop shipping. I, I did everything that was possible to, uh, that is related to selling stuff online. Mm -hmm. And until one day I decided, you know what, let me settle in, let me start a, like a regular business, which most people did started at that time which is like selling private labels so i decided you know what i'm gonna stick to private label i'm gonna get uh, i took some courses like the big courses to get to know everything about importing from china right. listing on amazon selling on amazon fba the whole thing and i did it like everyone else and you know since i, I didn't have a lot of money or resources to do to outsource stuff to hire people i did everything myself um you know, from importing, from creating the listings, from doing the actual images. I bought like a camera and the whole uh, 
the white box and stuff. I did everything as well. And I, uh, you know, I listed like everyone else. So after a while, you know, I, I started talking to people. People asked me, what do you do? What, what's your this? So I told them, you know, I sell on Amazon. See if people wanted to see like um, how I'm doing. Um, so I showed them like my listings and what I do. And, you know, people started to realize, uh, well, you, you know, I mean, you actually, you, you're actually doing a great job with the, creating the listing. Like, uh, like a, they asked me, like, who, who, who did your listing? How much did you pay? So I told them, I, I don't know. I did everything myself. And I didn't know there's like um, companies out there that, uh, you know, you charge money right. for it. Mm -hmm. So people started to convince me that I, I know how to do it. That's my specialty. I should start offering for other one, for other people. But I, I always ignored it, you know, because I, I'm not really the type of person like to go out there and do services for people and uh, talk to people. I'm more like a quiet guy on the side doing my thing. Right. And the more time went on, you know, more people, more friends, uh, actually some mentors. I found a good um, local mentors. They, they all convinced me like to start doing it for others as a business. At first I ignored it. And then, you know, um, then it started happening where people, uh, I guess they told other people and they came to me, they asked me for favors, maybe I should do it for them. So I did it in the beginning, you know, I did some favors and that's free. And after a while, and since I still ha had a job right then, it was hard to do it. So I decided, you know what, if you want, um, I can do it, but I'm going to charge a little bit. And by that time, someone, uh, also one of the people that realized it, they told me that there's a big company out there, like I'm working on a company out there that is selling on Amazon and they need someone, and they need help, um, like a, an extra, an, an expert like you to revamp all the listings, like uh, optimize all the content and the pictures and everything. So I wasn't sure first if I should take another job. I mean, after I was uh, I was on my own for a while, but then I decided, you know what? I'm still young and I still need to learn. I need to uh, I need to build up my this. So I took the job and I did everything. I went in and I redid all the listings. Long story short, I mean, they obviously saw a big, big uh, increase in sales organically because of the well optimized listings. And, um, you know, I learned a lot there, like I had a lot of experience. And also, you know, that as time went on, uh, people started to ask me and, and some workers in the company saw what, what I do. So they asked me to, to do it for them, for other people. So I... Uh, you know, I started doing it and then I decided one day, uh, you know what, I can do this myself. This is, this is what I'm supposed to do and this is what I like to do. And, you know, so I quit my job one day and I started doing it, uh, started fulfilling the request from people. And I, I did it for him, I did it for them. And then as time went on, you know, I see, okay, this is what I do. This is, I'm here by myself and I, I, I have to get business. So I started to create a business, a logo and, uh, and started to, to, to promote myself and uh, the business then LinkedIn came up and I started my morning over there and you know things happen and here I am. yeah that's the best way of learning actually just going through the process yourself and getting your hands a little dirty that's the best way of learning in my opinion um, you mm -hmm. could you can listen to a lot of courses and just read a lot but still until you get skin in the game that's right. the best experience Okay, what can you tell us about product testing optimization? Uh, before the before this call, we had a little chat about what we're going to talk about, and one of the topics was uh, product titles. Like one of the first things that customers see on the search results page, and uh, just generally tell us a little bit more what are the best practices for optimizing product titles, and also to get that initial click from that customer. And if there are any mistakes that people should should avoid when they're doing their product title optimization. All right. So 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 product title uh, product titles in, in specifically is um, I mean generally the, the whole listing the, the process that we do the listing is like a, we always try to focus on to do it like fifty percent for the algorithm which is like mm -hmm. Amazon uh, keywords SEO mm -hmm. and fifty percent for human. Um, where I see a lot of, a lot of times um, people doing a mistake is basically, I mean, in our company, we do a lot like we do a listing. People come to us, we, do, we have the listing for a few years, it's not moving, can you change it? So one thing we do is we realize that people are too focused on keywords, like SEO keywords, you want to rank in the first page, you want to be, so they, they slice on the whole, on the whole listing with keywords and they forget that the, the algorithm is not going to buy your product. The people right. actually human being are going to buy your product, so it has to appeal to them. So obviously the 50% for the keywords is obviously it's for the, it's for 
as you ask about the title, so the title is usually like a, obviously the, the first phrase. You want to make sure that that it um, has like the main keyword phrase, mm -hmm. and fill it up and like have like at least at least the top three phrases in the title for the algorithm. And then you know you have like a limit of two hundred characters for most categories. You know, you want to fill it up with with a with a, like a um, like also the, like the features and the benefits of the product and put like a small description in the title to convince people that this is um that this is uh, the, the product they're looking for. Mm -hmm. For example, I'm just think of an example. Um, so for example, we did like a, a listing for an, you know the, the reflective bands, you know the bands that you wear on your hands mm -hmm. your wrists and uh, fit for the, when you go out at night. So when we first got the listing, um, the listing was live for a while. But I see I saw that the, the seller basically put in all the keywords that relates to reflector, but it was missing like the, the human part of it. So um, I'm trying, mm -hmm. trying to remember what we put in. So basically, we took out some wording and we re replaced it with like some description, like stay safe out there when, you know, it sounds more like a description, but this is what, what people want to see. Like, how, how, how does it relate to me? So it tells them like stay safe or be visible uh, with our unique uh, reflector, something like that, you know, stuff like that. So people see, okay, this is this is what I'm looking for. And also regarding the the like the features what they have in on their specific reflector, you want to make sure that to point out like, at least one benefit of, of of that in the title, not only in the bullet point description but also in the title, because this, this is like the first impression. Um, yeah, so that's basically our title. So make make like a mix, 50% for the algorithm, 50% 50 for the human being, and it should be a success. What is your opinion of using brand names and product titles? Brand names, uh, me personally, I mean, I know Amazon suggests that you should put the brand name into this, but for me, I think it's it's a waste mm -hmm. of, first of all, it's a waste of character space, especially if you have like a long brand name. And Second of all, usually most people put it in the front end, but it, it, the problem is that when you search on, on a, uh, when you search on Amazon, especially on the mobile side, you, see, you can only see like the first few words. Right. So you, you don't want to take away the attention from the, as I mentioned before, like the keyword and the benefit, and waste it with your brand name because, as, you know, most people have, have no idea what your brand name, is, and they don't they don't they don't really care what your brand name is unless it's a big brand. So usually I don't like to put uh, um, the brand name, especially not in the first part of the title. I rather fill it up with a good keyword phrase and then right away like a, a benefit. So when someone goes in, they can see right away, okay, this is what I'm looking for. So let me go in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, for some reason they have recommended the usage of brand name as the first word in the title. But then again, if you don't have a lot of search volume in your brand name, then it makes no sense to use it, especially now that they have narrow down the number of characters that you're allowed to use. So right. especially some characters, you can only put like 80 characters, which is much uh, Yes. More important. So limiting. So limiting. Yeah. How do you how do you get around that? How do you approach when you have like 80 characters? What do you do? Yeah, you can you can't really do much. You can, you can basically basically do the same, like put like a phrase and then like a one one main one main feature of the product which uh, is doing the real uh, sale, you know? Right. Okay. Um, and about bullet points, do you have any advice for us? How do we make the most out of bullet points? Like, for example, we know for sure that in consumer psychology also, um, uh, the most effective way to present some information to customers is to group it in five or four, uh, four or five chunks. That's something that Amazon probably already knows, which is why they introduce bullet points. But when it comes to copywriting around bullet points, that's maybe... Uh, one of the best areas for improvement that a lot of people don't really use or don't aren't even aware of. So, what can you tell us? Uh, tell us a little bit more about bullet point bullet point optimization. Yeah, so so bullet points is the same thing, which is also supposed uh, should be more. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's also a great uh, space to put in like keywords for SEO, but mm -hmm. mostly it's for 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 the human aspect, which um, gives you like five bullet points, and that five bullet points should give them like right away like five main benefits so, so usually we try to focus on the on the benefit of the, of the product versus the features you know like usually we start the bullet points with a few cap cap uh, capital words and then then you continue the small so those caps words shouldn't be like um your features like 100 percent cotton or, or uh, you know stuff like that it should be rather like a, a benefit for example the, hmm? the reflector that i mentioned before it has like um 
Let me see, I'm trying to remember that. So basically, for, for example, it has like a, a feature like a Velcro instead of uh, a belt. You know, usually it has like a belt, but this one has like a Velcro, which is much easier. So instead of writing Velcro design, which most people do, you write like um, conveniently, uh, put, uh, I don't know exactly the word, but basically uh, take it off, put it on like a conveniently um, like in, a, in a hurry. So it's usually people that run around, they don't, they don't have time to, to take a break and, and do all this belt stuff. They want to they call the Velcro on and off. So I read a point in the big, the big words, like uh, um, conveniently, uh, quickly uh, um, put it on and off and uh, something like that. Then in the small description in that bullet points, we write about the Velcro design. So you basically switch the, the, the feature to the benefit. Same thing is with uh, um, like a strong, it has a very strong um, reflector. Don't write like a very strong reflector, you know? Better write like stay safe during the dark, dark, dark nights out there with our um, super strong reflector or whatever technology. Do you adjust the copy according to the audience? Like if there's, you know, there, there are certain products that never have a niche, like, you know, spatulas and plastic cups and stuff like that. But also there are products that are very much designed for a specific audience. So um, how do you approach uh, audience targeting through copywriting? Oh, the audience, like specific, uh, like, I mean. Yeah, so basically when you know, when you mentioned emphasizing the benefits, so do you uh, use some specifics of the, of the audience? Maybe some of the people will prefer mentioning Velcro design if, if uh, you know, that material is important to them, if they know really what, they, what it means, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I mean, Usually we try not, not to focus too much on the target because, because people that, that, that are, are, are not really the target for their product are not really looking for their listing. So once they're in the listing, it means that it's, it's for them. They're looking for it. For example, the reflect event is more, it's, it's made for athletes or people that do exercise at night or they, stuff like that. So mm -hmm. once they're in the listing, they're looking for their product. You, you know, they're, they're already there. So you don't have to tell them that it's for them like for, as, a, as a target. I mean, obviously we make sure to mention that it's, it's, it's great for athletes, it's great for runners and bikers and stuff like that, but try not to focus too much on that. We try to mainly to focus on the, ben the benefits in general, because, you know, um, if they are there in the listing, they're looking for their product, he, he's, they're most pro uh, probably the target audience anyway. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, do you use any emojis in bullet points? I forgot to ask, but some, I, I've seen some people do that. Yeah, so we have that option. I mean, we have a, a big uh, database of uh, all kinds of emojis. So usually we try to match the emoji with the so with the product. So let's say the list of cups. We, do, we add a cup, or I mean, so we have the option. I mean, but it's flexible. Some people, some clients don't like it. Some don't want it. I mean, it's optional. You can leave it. You can put it. It's up to them. Is that within TOS? So officially, um, they say you shouldn't, they should that, but it's basically the, the same idea as a, putting the branding with the front of the title, you know? Mm -hmm. They recommend you to do it, but uh, it's not really, uh, you can get, get away with it. So I personally feel that it's, it's, uh, um, it's beneficial to put the, the, the emoji because the way Amazon has the bullet points on the page, it looks like very squeezed, like one bullet point next to each other. So it's like, a, it looks like one whole description, very hard to read. Yeah. So when, when you put the, the emojis, it gives them like, okay, this is one, this is two, this is three. So there's some, some people don't like it because it looks too colorful to this, but then whatever, it's up to them and flexible. Yeah, it depends. If you have a very serious product, then it might be better right. to avoid it. Like, and if you're selling to women or maybe your target group is kids, it might make sense to be more colorful. Right. Or games and toys, it's usually... Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Interesting point. Um, about... Uh, Bullet uh, about the product descriptions. Can you tell us a little bit more how you do it? Um, what are the best practices? And uh, do you have like a structure in place that you always use, like a recipe for a good product description? What would it be? Yeah. So description. Obviously, there's two types. One is the <clears throat> the basic one, which is the just text, and the other one is like the A plus, which is E, e slash EBC. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the, the the basic one, the HTML description. So usually when it comes to description, you know, there's a few things that uh, it's important to point out. So first of all, the first thing is, you know, on Amazon, the description is usually like a very wide from 
page to page from one side. If you have like a big computer, yeah. it's very hard to read like all the scripture from one side to the other. So with the HTML codes, you can break it up. So usually we try to, when we do the listing, we do like, we try to keep it like on one side, like the full description on one side, we break up the line, so it shouldn't be like too long. And basically, the, the, in general, we try to make it like a very easy to read and people should understand, like it's, it should be fun to read. Mm -hmm. So usually we start the description with like two or three pain point questions about the product, like uh, to convince them that, you know, and so people should say, yeah, that's exactly me. That's, uh, you know, and then we answer that this, this product is their solution. And then we continue with like a, a few paragraphs of what a product does and, and maybe uh, about the brand and uh, two, three main features about their product. And, and then we, we always make sure to add, have like a section of a list of, let's say, five or 10 bullet points, like short to the point, which is like, the, like all the specs, the dimension, the colors and the features. Like a list so if someone wants to see okay i want to see all the features can you give me a list so they go there you can see them like right away like a list of all of this and obviously then at the end we finish it with a good um with a good uh, call to action you know to, to make sure that they they don't leave the page without buying and you know they shouldn't waste any time long to go search for it on amazon this is what you need this is what you want mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the sale. Um, I read uh, somewhere that, uh, you know, when you choose different fonts, which can happen when you use HTML, uh, you can actually slow down reading. Do you use like any different fonts or just like the regular? No, the fonts, we don't, we don't change the fonts. We only do like um, um, bold, like basically I said, mm -hmm. when we do this, uh, uh, we, it's, it's like a combination of a few paragraphs. So before each paragraph, you put like a title on, each, on top of each paragraph. And the title is usually in bold. Then there's it, it looks like the, the the bullet points, you know, like a small title, and then the description explaining that title. And then it makes it very easy to read, like to know that this is description is about this product. So if you don't care about this feature, you don't have to bother reading it. So it's uh, makes it very uh, appealing. And how do you find the inspiration for writing product description ideas? Um, what to well, basically, how do you find ideas what to write in the product description to make it interesting, aside from, you know, mentioning product features? Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's, it's part of, of doing research to see what um, what um, people are doing, like uh, writing a feature, mentioning about the product. And the, and the main point is, which I also train my, uh, my employees and the writers, mm -hmm. you always think like a customer, you know, like a get out of the, of the emotional part of the product. Just, just think about a customer. Uh, if, you, if you go on Amazon and you're looking for their product, what exactly do you want to see? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we always try to write it as this. And also like, a, you know, when I hire like writers for the for my agency, I don't just hire like good copywriters. I hire people that are actually salespeople. That, you know, when you walk into a store, they can sell you anything. So same things with the description. When they write the description, even though it's a plain basic product that doesn't really, you can't really tell anything, they find ways to make it really sell um, with a good sales copy. Yeah, corporate writing is practically one of the refined ways for sales. One of the, you know, basically. Mm -hmm. um, okay, um, I also wanted to ask you about a plus content. You mentioned that there are two ways, and um, the other one is A plus mm -hmm. content. What can you tell us a little bit more about that? You mentioned IP accelerator that you use, and uh, that would be a great thing to mention to our listeners too. Oh, so the IP accelerator. So first of all, A plus, you know, as you know, it's it's which is very important. It gives like a very good brand recognition, and uh, in general, it has like a lot of benefits. You, you can explain um, the product more, in much more detail. In, visually and, and with, with text and the whole thing explain that uh, the whole product in one in one section like a one box you can see everything so obviously most are some people that can uh, they, don't, they don't have brand registry or they, they can't take advantage of that um, which I told you before it's I think it's called um, it's IP accelerator I have to mm -hmm. find the link so you put it in the description um, there's a link where you can do the, the trademark Although usually a trademark takes like a year, so you don't, yeah. you don't want to wait a year to uh, you know to be able to have um, brand registry. So if you do it through them, I think it's like a group of lawyers, attorneys that work with Amazon. It's like official Amazon uh, thing. And if you do it to, through them, 
even though you're not yet approved for the or the trademark, you can still um, they approve you for brand registry. So it, it takes like two weeks. You can uh, you can have brand registry and enjoy all the benefits that comes along with it. Like the A so, plus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically, you don't have to wait like a whole year to get trademarked and then exactly. enjoy the benefits of Fable as content. Mm -hmm. And in your experience, what are the best practices mm -hmm. to do to create a plus content? So A plus content, I mean, obviously Amazon has their own, uh, usually have their own like a, a, a few options of um, layouts. layouts. So we usually try to not to follow any of those. We usually do like the custom, you know, uh, they have like a custom option. Mm -hmm. So we usually create a custom option according to the product, like which uh, we figure out which uh, layout will be the best for that product. So usually we start obviously the tie, the logo on top, holder in the top. That's usually like the first thing, and then we start with like with the first big banner. Uh, you know, usually when you go onto a website or any website, the first thing on the website is like a big banner that tells you exactly right away um, in general like what the what the company is doing. So the same thing is with a with a product. You know, uh, you put like a big banner. Uh, either a lifestyle photo of the product and someone is using it and on the side you put like a the title of the product and then like a slogan you know but then instead of putting like the name of the product we put like a, also like a, a benefit for example i'm trying to think of something for example we did recently like a, a cream you know like a face cream something like that mm -hmm. so instead of writing a big this this is a whatever the name is face cream right like you know where we write it like in big, like the number one solution for beautiful purified skin. Then we write in small, um, whatever the name of the product is. So this is the first impression, this is the first thing. And then we go further down, like uh, we make another banner, which is uh, mentions all the features mm -hmm. of the product, like zoomed in features. And then on the bottom, you have like um, the small images. We put like a small image of each feature. And then on the bottom is like text explaining that feature. You know, and then on the bottom, all the way on the bottom, like put like a big um, footer, um, like a call to action or a just about the brand. Like, uh, it's more like a branding um, aspect of the product, the listing. And how important is the copy inside of the A plus content? So the copy is not really, I mean, uh, you know, Nobody really knows about uh, the indexing if it's really uh, this, but usually we try not to focus on much on the keywords in the A plus. I mean, we, we always add something, but mm -hmm. we try more to focus on the graphics on the on the, on the visual parts of it. Um, I don't know if you saw my sample, but when you see it, like you can see, like it's like a full. It looks like a full web page, like the home page. You can yeah. see everything in one, like the graphics and, and and we try not to put a lot of um, text and. People, people don't have the patience to, to read all this uh, huge stuff. I see sometimes A plus content, like a small image, and then a lot of text on the side, and another small image, a lot of text. It's, it's not really the way. Rather use the space for like nice visual graphics and put some wording here and there, but not don't fill it up with a lot of uh, so many words. And do you use maybe alt text inside of those images, the graphics that you mentioned? Yeah. Text? So. Mm -hmm. So we, we we put in wording on the on the on the images. So it's, because when when you put it on the images, you have more much more flexibility with the fonts and the size of the text and the and the style of the, of the text. So it, it, you can play around with it, and you don't have to follow Amazon's. Um, because if you if you just copy paste it into Amazon sections where you can put a text, it's just the um, basic text. So also you, you can make like a nice graphic, like a nice infographic with forms or, or uh, charts, you know, and it's essentially one image which you upload in A+, plus, but in that one image, there's a lot of, uh, it mm -hmm. looks like a, a chart that's supposed to be. Yeah, and there's this another tip that I heard somewhere, uh, which is putting alt text inside of the, in the back end of the images which uh, practically means putting keywords like a descriptive words, uh, what the image is, which helps uh, ranking from that part, yeah. you know, keyword optimization. So that's like another thing that a lot of sellers don't realize they can do. And it actually helps same way. Like you optimize for SEO on Google by adding all the text to your images. You can, you can actually use that part for your uh, ranking on Amazon as well. Mm -hmm. that's like, something that a lot of people don't know. So when it comes to images in general, um, do you have any advice for people 
that are doing it themselves, for example, that don't, don't use a product photographer, um, having your own experience in place, what, what is the thing that they can do with a regular camera and just their product? Yeah, so when it comes to in, like the main images on the listing, obviously the first thing is the main image, mm -hmm. which is uh, officially through Amazon, it has to be like the, the just the product with the white background, which is nice, but um, you know, everyone is doing this. So when you go on Amazon and search for a product, if everyone has the same product, same white background, you know, it doesn't really tell anything. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be ahead of everyone, you got to be a little bit, uh, step a little bit out of the box and do a little bit more, even though it's not um, in this. So usually, uh, you can do it by adding like a, you know all those icons icons about uh, either a benefit like BPA free or if you have any specific, yeah if you have any specific feature that uh, you put in a, a lot of work you know during the during the manufacturing of the product make sure to have it on the main image so people can see it right away because this is like the first impression so don't be afraid to like add something I mean it should be white background definitely but you can add a lot of few two or three um, small things that will actually uh, convert that um, that sale. I also heard that using faces faces um, in your product images really helps capture the attention of the audience. Like yes. people associate with faces because of the facial recognition and they like the product more. Right. So 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 basically the, the image is is very important. I mean people uh, I see a, many times people they focus a lot of, of, on good photography, which is like very clear, very sharp, but that, that doesn't really make the sale. I mean, the main thing is that um, on Amazon, you know, it's not like you go into a store, you can see or, see or feel the product. Or, um, you basically have to be convinced on the photos. So, and, and a lot of people don't have fish to read, like title, bullet points. They, they look at the images, whatever they see there, and they make a decision. So it's very important to take advantage of the secondary images. Mm -hmm like this and um, um, to make a combination, you know, of a few um, uh, lifestyle images, obviously to, to show how the product is being used, to feel like all angles and uh, how it's being used to do. So when you work, instead of walking to a store and like actually using the product, you can, you can imagine yourself like you're holding it or you're using it. It's very important. And also the infographics, which to make sure that everything that you mentioned in the bullet point in the description, for those people that don't read it, make sure that it's all in the images so they don't miss it. And you can also describe the product so well, like a zoom in the feature, put in the right words, put in like a nice title on top of the image to uh, like a sales uh, pitch, something like that. And basically to convince people only through the images. And um, yeah, so you know, so the, the, I, I heard from many people. I don't, I don't have patience to read all those bullet points. I, even though it's short to the point bullet point, it's, it's too much worse. You know, when you go to Amazon page, you see so many uh, images, all those um, recommended listings. Come on, there's so much going on on a listing. And so they only look at the images. So it's very important like the, to describe every feature, every benefit, and all the lifestyle, everything in the, uh, in the images. So usually, uh, generally, the rule, I can, we try to do like a uh, seven images like one main image and six um, graphic images yeah you're trying to tell a story through imagery like you yeah. know like uh, uh, average attention span right now on the internet is about between eight and twelve seconds actually and yeah. you know there's always going to be people who like to read who like to get more details about something and then you have to have a copy that's really like killing mm -hmm. copy. but at the same time, you have to have wonderful creative uh, visual assets that will help you, you know, uh, transcend the message to your customers about the product. So uh, some of them won't even have patience for imagery. They will want to have a look at the video, perhaps if you have video, multiple videos instead. And I've seen a lot of sellers also create uh, GIFs out of these videos um, because it's more interactive. It keeps their attention on the listing and mm -hmm. not, not let them go away from the listing, which is also yeah. good things. Video is also good. I mean, uh, lately I've seen it. I mean, it costs a lot of money to make like a professional video, a lifestyle video. So, I mean, so we have a, <coughs> one option, which is, we can, which can do it. It's, it's a semi video. It's, it's considered a photo. It's, it's, it's like a, a 360 image. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like a video. We can see the whole product um, from angle to angle. So, which is instead, of, if you don't if you don't want to spend for a video, you spend like a little bit less money and have like a nice um, 360 image. So 
like a video, but you can see the whole product from all angles. I, I haven't seen that a lot on Amazon, but it's actually brilliant. Like, you know, it's also um, endorsing that interactivity with the brand, with the, mm -hmm. with the product listing. But I haven't seen a lot of uh, sellers do it. Is it because it's difficult to set up or? It's, no, it's not really difficult. I mean, I, obviously, um, not everyone can have video in general. I mean, you have to brand registry and, uh, and, and also this. And, yes. and um, most people don't even know about it. I mean, lately, I, I, I offered it to a few clients and they were like surprised. Oh, wow, you can do this? You know, it's, uh, people don't, don't know about it. So we have to, uh, I mean, uh, it, 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 it's very beneficial. It's, you know, you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars for thousands of dollars for a nice video. You can have like for uh, a couple, like a two hundred dollars, you can have, can have like a nice um, 360 image. It's like a video, and the customer can see exactly the product from top to bottom, from side to side. It's just, uh, very good. And until you have enough money to invest in those visual assets like videos, um, mm -hmm. would you would you advise people to just go ahead and make like an amateur video by themselves, just to put something that has that kind of interactive moment to it? In the listing, I mean, it depends. Some some people like it. Some people, uh, it, it depends on the person. Some people want to be professional. Everything has to be perfect. So if it's not, they're not gonna put it up. But, but it's, and the other point, um, customers like to see like a, a more generic stuff versus professional stuff because they want to see like a. Uh, I, I've seen it sometimes when people they get like video reviews. You know, like a video. Someone just got a product. And they put like a video um, yeah. of the product. They put it on the top of the images. But it's, it gives it like a very, very uh, um, natural um, um, point of view, which you can actually see once you get the product at home. This is how it's going to look. This is how it's going to feel. So yeah, it doesn't have to be like with the whole production and stuff. I mean, it, it's good, but if you don't want to spend the money, you can, uh, you can get away with it. I think so too. Yeah, um, and if you still want to be professional and do this right and then wait up for the right moment to invest in a, in a product video, you mm -hmm. can maybe, you know, ask for a friend or family, which is against the OS, but uh, ask for someone to leave a review, like a social proof with the video, because I know for sure that a lot of customers appreciate that. Just make sure you do it in a careful manner <laughs> mm -hmm. because of the roles that Amazon mm -hmm. giving yeah. us. Um, also about the backend search terms, this is one of the topics <clears throat> we haven't covered yet. Um, what do you do uh, when you optimize backend search terms? So backend search terms is, uh, um, which I've seen a lot of people do mistake, is, is basically they, uh, so they also try, I mean, it's very known like the search terms have, have a big uh, impact on the keyword search. So they put in all the keywords again, over again, like phrases and stuff. I mean, since Amazon limited the, the character space to 249, mm -hmm. it, it's a waste of space if you, if, if you redo, um, the same thing. So usually what we do is, you know, we have, we have like the whole process on how we create a listing. Um, basically, we try to put all the main, all, all the keywords that is relevant to the, really relevant to the product, we, we try to fill it up in the, in the front end, like the title and the bullet points mainly. And all of the rest, uh, like the backend search terms, there's only like 249 characters. We try to put like keywords that are not really real product, but it's re re related to your product. For example, I'm trying to, um, mm -hmm. There's like a, many categories which have like a product that, are, that is related to each other. For example, if you're selling swimming product, right? Swimming, you sell like swimmer goggles. Usually when someone needs swimmer goggles, they also need like a nose clip. They also need like a swim cap and other stuff. Yeah. So basically what, what we do is, so let's say you're selling swimmer goggles. I'm not going to put, again, swimmer goggles in the backend search terms. Rather, we put like swim cap or nose clip or swimming gear, stuff like that. That when someone is searching for a nose clip, they should also see, I mean, like a bundle with your goggles. Because it's the same thing like like the retail stores, you know. Retail stores yeah. usually they put like the like whole category. Okay. They put like one product next to each other to convince you that if you're looking for that product, you should also buy that product, which is related, and you also need it down the road. But the same thing is with that. I mean, you you you, you want to make sure not to put like a totally irrelevant because um, then the, the, the search results will be not so relevant, which is not good, but only if it's really related, like the, which you, you can buy it as a bundle. I can buy a swim goggles, you buy it together with a swim cap, with a, with a nose clip, all together, and we have it all in the back end. And also, um, 
which is kind of important. I mean, it's 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 known, but uh, most people don't do it. Which is like putting like misspelled words in the in the back end. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, although I'm a, I'm a very professional speller, I, I know how to spell every word mostly. But still, you know, when I type on my phone, I want to buy a product on Amazon. I'm not really like uh, looking at the spelling. I, I just type it. And usually on the phone, it happens a lot where you, where you mistype a word, like a, you put one letter in O. And it's, it's, it's always good to, uh, um, it happens a lot and it happens to everyone. So that, that's why it's always good to have like misspelled uh, words, or the, at least for the main one or main uh, two main keyword phrases. So if someone is, is accidentally um, um, hitting the wrong uh, spelling, your product should come up instead of others. So basically, you know, um, backend search terms would be like an alternative strategy to get ranked for all those additional placements. When someone's misspelling a word, you will show up. When uh, you are on the, when your products are on the product detail pages of competitors, maybe you will show up in the frequently bought section because, because you added all those additional upsell products similar to, like you said, mm-hmm. offline detail stores, which is very smart. Um, do you use any synonyms in backend search terms? Yeah, so that's also what I want to say. So, so um, mm-hmm. most words, like most products have like many different names, how you can call the product. Um, I don't know anything on top of my head, but uh, it's very obvious. So, so when you, when you, when there's a lot of words how you can call like a certain product. So usually in the, um, the, the obvious words, like the, the general words you put in the front end, this is how most people call it. And then there's some words that people call it in, in let's say, in England, you know, which is also English, but it's not the uh, you know, English. So you want to make sure that uh, for those people that use different words for that product, it should also come up. So you put all those uh, synonyms in, um, in the back end. Interesting. Um, Mac, do you have anything else that you wanted to share with us today in, this, in today's episode? Something to uh, have sellers keep in mind when they're optimizing their product listings and, or, or about selling in general? Yeah, I mean, optimizing listing, we, we, we just spoke about, which is this, but uh, regarding selling on Amazon, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to be the one that uh, discourages people or sellers, stuff like that, but I want to be honest uh, at the same time. So for me, my advice, especially for n- new sellers, you know, people that are starting out now, People have to know that it's, it's 2020 now and it's no, no longer the Amazon of, I don't know, 2015, 2014, whatever, when, when, it, when it used to be easy. When you just slap in a product, you put it on with a basic uh, listing, which is basic photos, and they used to sell right away. Uh, and you used, used to be able to get reviews quickly. So it, it, it's totally different. And people, uh, people are used to the fact that Amazon is like a make, make, quick, uh, make money quickly, which is uh, this. And, and that's how people get into it. That people don't, they don't want to have a job or they don't have a job, they start, they think they will get rich quick. But the problem is it's, 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 it's no longer like that. It's, it, these days selling an Amazon is like a real business. You know, the same thing, uh, if, if, you want, uh, if you want to open a, a, like a, um, any other business, like a painting business or whatever, any like a local store, you, you don't want to open it because you don't want to invest money, you don't want to, wait uh, till you start making money. Amazon is the same thing these days. It's like a real business. If you're not really ready for the consequences of owning a business, running a business, then I, I don't know if you're ready to sell on Amazon these days, to be honest, because it's, it's like a, it requires a lot of patience. You have to be very patient and waiting because it takes a few months till you start seeing like the results, like it's a start making profit. Mm-hmm. So you have to be ready like mentally, like knowing uh, what to expect and, and, and be ready to have the consequences that comes along with selling on Amazon, you know, all those rules, changes, and all the negative stuff, and also be ready financially, you know, because you will have to be ready to spend a lot of money. You know, this is, this is, this is the game, which is a, it's, it's a pay to, pay to play. If you pay, you can play. If, yeah. even, if not ready to pay, you can't play the game. So it's, uh, you have to be ready to spend the money that requires, you know, and compete with all the sellers that are there for years already, and people with big budgets. If you're not ready for that, I mean, I don't want to tell you to stop or give up, but um, I just want to, want to make you aware that uh, you have to be ready. You have to be uh, willing to accept the challenges that comes along the way. Okay. Um, thank you for being our guest today. And uh, thank you for sharing all these valuable advice. Um, if anyone should uh, be interested in contacting you, they can reach out 
see you on LinkedIn. And I will also leave a link below our, in, the, in our video description to Mac's website so you can see and uh, learn more about their services. Yeah, and definitely, and, th and thank you. Thank you, so much. it's my pleasure being here and sharing my value and my, uh, my time. But, and, and also, um, if you have your audience, like they're, they're, I, I'm sure they're Amazon sellers and they're, they're always looking for more advice, more help, they can always, obviously you can always reach out to me. And also, um, if they have WhatsApp, you know, I have like the, you know, the WhatsApp uh, mm -hmm. program, we have like the status and stuff. So usually I try to be active with it, to provide my value every day which uh, people are connecting with me and we, um, I usually share like the, the latest news from Amazon on my status, the latest updates, if there's any changes, any rule changes or anything. I usually post it there so people, it's like sellers can stay connected and get updated, um, you know, to be on, on top of the game every day. So uh, I don't know, maybe if you wanna share it and this, um, people can connect. And also I send out like every month, uh, every week actually, like a weekly, it's not like a generic a newsletter, a boring newsletter. It's more like I send out like the a recap of the of the of everything that went on in Amazon, like any rule changes, any news related to Amazon, and uh, if there's any new shows, like uh, there's everything, uh, anything um, valuable for sellers. You send it out one um, like every week, whatever, so people can connect and you know stay on top of the game. We'll make sure to share all the relevant links in our video description so that people can stay in touch and follow. Thank you for being our guest on the show today. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Bye -bye.